What's up, everyone? For those of you who don't know, my name is Devin Wood, AKA Unreal Devin Wood, and I am an amateur Instagram comedian, basically. I make a lot of comedy skits, I do a podcast and some other stuff, but I'm definitely a funny guy. What I wanted to do with this video was talk about something that I've had an experience with, and I'm sure that many other people have, and I kinda wanted to just talk about it from my perspective. And what I'm talking about is drug addiction, and more specifically being the child of someone who struggles with drug addiction. I think a lot of times when we have these kinds of conversations, we sort of beat around the bush, and we sugarcoat things, when the reality of it is you know, that it can be very dark, very dangerous, and very harmful. With that being said, I wanna preface this video Video by saying I am an incredibly happy person I truly genuinely have so much joy in life and I really do enjoy life so this is not gonna be a video about how uh, you know my my mother's drug addiction ruined my life or destroyed me it very easily could be but fortunately for me in this case it's not but what I do want to talk about though is my experiences with it um, and like I said this is from my perspective as a son and kind of just talk about how it changed me how it affected me you know how it kind of had its hand in molding me into the person that I am today, and also my reactions and the things that I do remember, most of which I do remember, and uh, you know, kind of just be really honest and upfront about that. I would be willing to bet that most people watching this have personally dealt with substance abuse or alcohol abuse or know someone who has, and if there's one thing that's true time and time again, it's that when someone is involved in abusing these drugs and alcohol and other things like that, it doesn't just affect the person. It essentially affects everyone around them, and that was absolutely the case with me. So just to give a little backstory on my specific situation, uh, my mother has battled drug addiction for a very long time. Uh, and I personally feel like it's a never ending battle, even though she's been sober now for a few years, she's been clean, um, but it's almost a never ending battle. And that's where I talk about just being honest and upfront. That's the truth of it. I personally feel like the one thing with a drug addict is that they could be clean for five, 10, 15, 20 years, and all it takes is one mistake, one bad day, you know, uh, falling apart one time to fall right back in that vicious cycle. Fortunately, for the last five years, my mother has been good, but again, if I'm just being honest and upfront, there's no way that I could say to you guys, I can guarantee she'll, this is, you know, this is it for her and her addiction. She's clean forever. I can't say that. I hope it. I like to believe it, but I cannot say that with absolute certainty. So anyway, you know, one of the things about drug addiction that I like to say that I feel is that it, it changes a person. I mean, not only does it, you know, can it physically affect you, your body, your brain, but I truly feel like it completely changes a person and their personality and everything about them. And the unfortunate thing is that even when they do get better, you know, they may get back to some version of themselves, but it's never going to be what it was before the drugs. As it stands right now, my mother and I have a pretty good relationship but it's definitely had its ups and downs, and it is definitely not that conventional mother-son relationship, uh, and it never will be, and that's okay. As I got older, I kind of started to accept that, you know, like, for, for me and my mom, our relationship has a certain ceiling, you know what I mean? Our relationship can never be, like I said, that conventional, beautiful mother-son relationship. It just never can be. Too much has happened because of her addiction that will never allow that to happen. And like I said, I'm okay with that. I accept that. And as I got older and started to have these conversations with my mother, she kind of started to accept it too. For the longest time, as I was getting older, she tried to kind of buy my love back. You know what I mean? She tried to shower us in gifts, give me and my siblings money, pretty much never said no to us, let us do whatever we wanted, gave us whatever we wanted as her way of sort of compensating for all the mistakes that she had made. Now, while at the time being a teenager, this was great. I could do what I wanted. I was getting tons of stuff and I thought it was great. And she probably thought it was working, but in reality, it wasn't. It was just a facade. It was a mirage of some relationship with her children that now never could be. Now, I personally do not have any anger left in me about it. Um, I don't have any resentment. I don't hate my mother. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of people in these situations probably do, and, and rightfully so. I think it's very common for a child who was affected by their parents' drug addiction to probably hate them or resent them or hold these grudges and have these feelings for a long time, if not a lifetime. And I can get that. I understand that. That's just not how I choose to handle the situation. I just feel generally about anger and resentment and hatred. I don't want to hold on to those feelings at all. I don't want to harbor those type of things for the rest of my life. So I don't really feel that way about anyone or anything, this included. But with that being said, although I may not hate my mother for it, I may not resent her for it. I forgave her for the things that she has done, but I still hold her accountable. I know that might not make sense, but basically what I mean is that I've accepted the things that have happened, I've accepted this reality, and I've learned to cope with it and deal with it and make the best of the situation as it is, but I still fully acknowledge, like, this, these are the things that you did, and just so you know, this is how it's affected me, 
but I don't hate you for it. I do not hate you for that. That's okay. You did what you did. What's happened has happened. I'm here now. I'm happy. I'm living my life and that's okay. I'm not going to allow those things that have happened, you know, the things that did transpire to affect me anymore. So that's just how I feel about the situation. Now that I kind of got that stuff out of the way, though, I wanted to give a couple of um, real life experiences that I had and tell you how I handled them. I think my situation was a little bit unique because out of my mother's four children, I'm the oldest one. So being the oldest, and I'm sure many people listening to this who have been in that position would probably agree, being the oldest, you're almost forced to grow up, you know, way too fast and deal with things that you probably should never have had to deal with. But because of the fact that you're the oldest sibling, it's sort of in your nature to want to protect your younger siblings. And that was very much what I did and how I felt. Just to jump back in real quick, uh, another thing about drug addiction is that a lot of times when you are a drug addict, you have poor choices, obviously. And one of those poor choices is the people you surround yourself with. And my mother, that's been one of her biggest issues that she's struggled with her entire life, drugs or not, is just choosing the right people around you. She's never been good at that. With that being said, she had a boyfriend at the time who was just no good and not only was doing the same things that she was, but was encouraging it and was also introducing her to other things. But that's a, a story for another day. Anyway, I remember one time when uh, her and her boyfriend were at the house and they were getting this huge fight. And my youngest sister was in my mother's arms at the time. I think she was maybe like, I want to say like two or three years old. And I remember he had punched her. He punched her right in her head while she was holding my sister. And my other sister and my brother, who are both younger than me, were standing behind me and were just kind of crying and they didn't really understand what was going on. It's a very scary situation. You know, things are happening very fast. It's violent. There's a lot of yelling, screaming, and cursing. And I remember I kind of just manned up, even though I was also terrified. I also felt all the same things that they did, but I didn't allow myself to show it because I needed to be strong for them, which is something I'm sure many of you can relate to. I remember I kind of went in there and some way, somehow maneuver my way into getting my sister from my mother. And I remember I went back into the room with my three siblings and we were all just bawling. Everybody was crying and upset and asking if everything's okay. And I remember just over and over again saying, it's going to be okay. Everyone's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. And you know, the funny thing is I was trying to convince myself that those things were true also. But like I said, I was terrified. I may have been the oldest, but I was still a kid. I was still a child. I think maybe I want to say somewhere between like 12 and 14 you know, I'm still a kid and these things are still frightening to me, but because of the fact that I'm the oldest sibling and I was sort of thrusted into that role, I felt responsible for holding everything together and being strong for my younger siblings. After they were done arguing in the one room, I remember her boyfriend went and locked himself in one of the bathrooms and my mother, who again, struggle with addiction. She has her issues. She went and grabbed a knife. And I remember watching her trying to stab through the door, which just to add a little bit of comedy to it, if we're being realistic, she took a steak knife. There's no way in hell you're going to get through a door with a steak knife. All right. But anyway, she took the steak knife and she's sitting here just violently, repeatedly stabbing, trying to get, I guess, into the bathroom and, and to him. And at this point, the bathroom is like literally five feet away from where me and my siblings are. And I remember just kind of peering my head out through the door and looking and watching it. And, you know, as I'm watching, I'm just like, man, this is crazy. But I don't say anything. I don't react. And then I go back into the bedroom. And, of course, my siblings are like, what's going on? What's happening? And, again, I just kind of try to reassure them everything's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to be safe. I locked the door. And we kind of just cooped up in there until the situation sort of just fizzled off. That's just one of many similar instances that happened with men and my mother. Um, and, you know, another interesting thing, like I said, being the oldest child and being the oldest son specifically, is that I dealt a lot with my mother choosing other men over me. For the longest time, I didn't really understand that and it hurt me a lot and it made me so angry and so sad and very unloved. It just made me feel horrible, honestly. And for the longest time, I couldn't get that. And like I said, don't get me wrong, I hold my mother accountable, but also for the longest time, I did not understand how much of her behavior was because of the drugs. Now that I'm older and I see that, like I said, those things, they're irreversible. You can't replace that time that I missed out on with my mother. You can't replace that love. You know, there's no going back on that. So I, now as an adult, I don't expect that. I sort of just accept that, hey, this is where we are. This is what it is. The best thing now that you can do for me is to be better going forward. You know, don't drag me down anymore than you have at this point. That would be the best way you could repay me for the things that you have done already. I remember there was another time with this same boyfriend when uh, he kicked us out of his apartment. And I remember my mother had packed a bunch of trash bags full of her clothes. 
And this was actually before that other incident. I was a little bit younger at the time. And I remember he threw one of the garbage bags full of clothes and it knocked me over. Honestly, I don't know if he was actually trying to hit me in that moment or not, but it did regardless. And it knocked me over. Believe it or not, I wasn't always this big. I used to be a tinier kid. And I remember the bag just completely knocked me over. And I remember my mother flipping out and going over and charging at him. And that's the thing with her. She's now my mother's tiny. She's like four foot 11, but she always wanted to get in physical altercations with the guys. She was fearless in that regard, but it's also very stupid because when you're talking about somebody who's six foot two, 250 pounds, you don't stand a chance. And a lot of times she ended up getting hurt or beat up or abused or whatever the case was in those situations because not only was she putting herself in those situations, but she also wasn't scared of them until they got bad enough. One of the things I like to tell people when I talk about this stuff is that, you know, one thing, uh, one of the unfortunate things that you learn with dealing with someone with addiction is that after a long enough time, you go from feeling angry and sad to just simply feeling disappointment. And believe it or not, feeling disappointment might be an even shittier feeling than feeling sad or feeling angry. Because to feel disappointment is to, to expect someone to do better and to be let down time and time again. And that's exactly what I would say I dealt with with my mother. A prime example of this would be an incident where, and I tell people all the time that this is probably the saddest, if not one of the saddest things that's ever happened to me. And what's even more sad was my reaction to it. But one of the saddest things I would say would be when one time uh, my mother had planned a trip to, I think, Great Escape or some theme park or something for me and my siblings. We were all so excited. We couldn't sleep. But finally, we all fell asleep. Well, everyone except for me. And I remember I could not sleep. I was just too excited. And it's about two or three o'clock in the morning. And I remember having to go to the bathroom. So I went to go open the bathroom door. I opened the bathroom door and I just see my mother sitting on the toilet, completely knocked out, practically unconscious, with a needle sticking out of her arm. In that moment, I feel like a lot of kids would probably have started crying, yelling, screaming, checking on their mother, making sure she's okay. But that's not what I did. I remember I opened the door. I saw that. And all I did was just felt so disappointed and not even so much for me but more so for my siblings i felt worse for them that they were now going to miss out that this whole nice trip we had was ruined i felt way more poorly for them than i did myself and i think it speaks a lot to the way that these experiences kind of desensitized me to the types of things that were going on around me um and that could be a very scary and dangerous thing but i think for me in a way it almost made me more mentally strong which is definitely not the most ideal way to become mentally strong or tougher, but it did have that effect on me, fortunately, nonetheless. And I remember after I saw it, like I said, I didn't check on her to make sure she was okay. I didn't, you know, push her and knock her around. I didn't yell. I didn't do anything. I just remember closing the door and just shaking my head in disappointment because I knew that, that my siblings were going to be so disappointed in the morning and that I was disappointed and it was just just an overall really bad experience. I wanted to give those two examples specifically, but just in general, some of the things that I dealt with, and I'm sure that many of the people who are addicts or who deal with addicts have had to deal with also, is you know, the arrests, the stealing, the lying, the lying especially. Constantly being put in dangerous situations and putting other people in dangerous situations. So many things that came along with the addiction that, like I said, it really just engulfed everyone around her as well as herself. I think the biggest telltale for someone who deals with someone who's an addict is that the most nerve wracking thing in the world is that when that person isn't around and the phone rings and especially late at night, your heart drops into your stomach every single time. And I don't know that that ever goes away because when you're dealing with an addict, so many times those phone calls are about arrest, the phone calls from the police, from the hospital, and they, they are varying in how bad they are or are not. But the one phone call you never want to hear is that the person died. You don't ever want to get that overdose phone call, but you can never help but to think that that call, that next call, this is going to be it. This is going to be that call where you finally find out that this person's addiction has killed them. And like I said, man, that paranoia, that worry, every time the phone rings, it's, it's crazy. It's actually really weird how literally when the phone rings, and like I said, especially late at night, you know, midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock, when that phone rings, the worst thoughts race through your mind in the few seconds before you pick it up. And it seems like a lifetime because you just think you're going to pick up the phone and it's going to be the police telling you that they need you to come identify a body. Fortunately for me and my family, we have not had to deal with that, and I pray that we never do. But, like I said earlier in this video, and I have to be honest, is that as unfortunate as it is to say, and as confident as I am in how well she's doing at the moment, 
You can never say with absolute certainty when talking about an addict that they are completely over their addiction. That's how I personally feel about it. And I think that's why a lot of people say it's a lifetime battle. It's a lifelong battle. And even if you win that battle for the whole rest of your life, it's still a battle. It's every single day, I would imagine, you have to wake up and actively fight those demons, those impulses, and those urges to make sure that you don't fall down that path again. I think I'm gonna end the video there. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video, like I said, being honest, kind of giving my personal experiences, letting people into my life a little bit, which I don't do very often, and uh, just talking about something that I think is not talked about enough, and when it is talked about, I don't think it's talked about honestly enough. So those are my thoughts, those are my opinions. You guys can let me know what you think. You know, Let me know how the experience has been for you, if you've dealt with it. Uh, and for those of you watching, if anybody ever wants to talk, and this just applies in general, but especially if you're dealing with stuff similar, uh, I've experienced it, I've gone through it, and I'm always all ears. If anybody wants to talk, I am always down to listen, uh, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully this will bring some awareness, or shed some light, or change somebody's life or mind in one way or another. That's all I really hope to do with this, so anyway, I will see you guys next time. Peace.